हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द अमेजिंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फिजिक्स वाला वेलकम टू द पी डब्ल्यू इंग्लिश चैनल माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स we have reached on the lecture 7 of solid state till now we have discussed everything about crystalline solids how are crystalline solids how can we classify them how are we actually discussed basically about the cubic crystal systems different types of arrangement of atoms in a crystal system we have discussed a lot about it we have also discussed the layering which is a very important and very conceptual part if you are not clear you definitely have to go through the last lecture that is the most important lecture i have showed you a video there the animation how layering actually happens in the solids okay yes so today we will be covering about now we have discussed everything about crystalline solids now my dear students we always think that yeah crystalline solids will be absolutely perfect crystals right yes but they also have some defects and we are going to discuss about those defects okay why do defects arise in solids what is the basic reason behind them today we will be understanding about that and we'll cover everything about the solid state today okay my dear students so, so let's start the session so if you talk about the solid defects my dear students solid defects can be of different different types it can be a point defect i can say that a solid defect can be a point defect that is a defect at one particular point of a solid right yes the other thing could be that it is a line defect might be some line in a solid is completely defected then it will be known as a line defect and the third type would be your plane defect when the complete plane when the complete plane is uh, when the complete plane has some defect uh, defect in it that is known as the plane defect okay but we will be majorly discussing about the point defects point defect effects are in your syllabus so today we will be covering all about that i hope all of you are excited so let's start the session my dear students so let's talk about the defects so why do defects arise the first and the most important question and when are solids absolutely perfect see see my dear students uh, let's talk about you you are sitting in a room and you are completely stable you are in your relaxed position you don't have any issues till now okay all of a sudden what happens is a spark comes and somewhere you see some fire okay in the particular room you are present okay what will happen you were in your stable position now you will gain some energy and you will just rush out of the room right yes so you saw the fire and you gained some energy and you rushed out of the you rushed out of the room similarly your your solids are absolutely absolutely perfect and their stable positions when they are at absolute zero temperature that is zero kelvin temperature now as you start giving some temperature to your solids as you start giving some temperature to your solids your solids actually start showing some defects okay yes so this is the major uh, case why, why defects arise because of increase in temperature okay one by one we'll read everything about it the first thing is this okay it is stable at absolute zero it gains it shows some defects when the temperature is when you heat a solid okay perfect next my dear students all the solids are still stable why are they stable because they will be stable as long as their electrical neutrality is maintained as long as the electrical neutrality of a solid is maintained it is stable completely stable okay so now let's understand this the irregularities in the structure of crystalline solids is known as solid defects okay the the irregularities it should be irregularities the irregularities in the structure of crystalline solids is known as the solid defect okay at zero kelvin that is o and k you can call it like okay or you can say zero kelvin the crystal is perfect and there is no solid defect because it is in its most stable form okay now the extent of solid defect increases with the increase in temperature as you will increase the temperature the defect would increase if any solid defect in any solid defect it should be in 
any solid defect electrical neutrality will be preserved always and always your total positive charge would be equal to the total negative charge that is something very very important okay yes we will always keep in mind that if we are talking about a solid its electrical neutrality should be maintained so this is very very important case for us to understand in fact all the points are very important so please note them down will you be using all these points in the defects and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it my dear students now the constituent particles may not be present at exact lattice points now what happens is what ap actually happens in a point defect is might be there is a point where your constituent atom was actually supposed to be present but it will not be present there and that would be the point defect okay i told you in point defect there would be a defect at some point and how can it be that us atom was supposed to be present there but it is not present there why is it not present there because it is a point defect right yes so this is the basic idea behind a point defect that the constituent particles may not be present at the exact lattice point okay perfect please write it down then we'll move forward now now let's try to make a small flow chart that what kind of defects we will be discussing today okay so now my dear students if we talk about the solid defects defects are majorly classified as it is stoichiometric defects and the other is non stoichiometric defects now let's try to understand what stoichiometric defects and non stoichiometric defects denote see you have a particular ratio of your uh, cations to anions right yes you have solids you have cations and anions so you have a particular type of uh, cations and anions ratio right yes if that ratio is maintained then it is a stoichiometric defect if that ratio is not maintained then that is a non stoichiometric defect i'll give you example you'll understand let's first increase uh, understand this particular point now my dear students your stoichiometric defects can be in two major parts the first part could be also there is one more type of defect which is also known as impurity defect okay it is impurity defect now let's try to understand the stoichiometric defect so if we talk about the stoichiometric defect my dear students your stoichiometric defects can be present either in non ionic solids i could say these are your ionic solids or they might be non ionic solids now if we talk about non ionic solids they will not have cations and anions individually right yes here my dear students the two types of your defects are classified as vacancy defect and interstitial defect okay now let's talk about ionic solids now if we talk about ionic solids my dear students then ionic solids can be classified majorly as two again the one would be your stoich uh, skotky defect please uh, mind my spelling of skotky okay uh, i don't remember its spelling it's okay i am not a english teacher by the way okay and frankel defect we'll study each and every one of it individually now these are the defects which maintain your stoichiometric uh, ratio that is cations to anions ratio will be <clears throat> 
defects okay now let's talk about non stoichiometric defects because impurity defects are uh, uh, they are in their way one individual now let's talk about the non stoichiometric defect where the cation to anion ratio changes and now my dear students they can be classified as either metal excess defect <clears throat> or they could be metal deficiency defect okay so these are the these are the types of defects that we will be discussing in this particular chapter we will be discussing each and every defect one by one so you have to just keep be you or you'll have to be patient okay yes so let's start please write it down okay now let's try and understand point defect point defects are majorly classified as a stoichiometric defect and non stoichiometric defect this is written stoichiometric and this is written non stoichiometric just in case if you are not able to see it okay so this is your stoichiometric defect non stoichiometric defect i have made you draw the complete flow chart so it is of no use here now let's talk about the stoichiometric defect what exactly is meant by stoichiometric defect in this defect the stoichiometric formula remains unaffected that is the ratio to your cation and anion always remains the same okay yes that is something very important you can write that ratio of cation to anion remains same okay now let's talk about the non stoichiometric ratio uh, stoichiometric defect the stoichiometric formula that is the ratio of the ions that is the ratio of your cation to anion will be affected so ratio of cation to anion is changed okay so it gets changed then that would be known as your non stoichiometric defect okay i hope till now everything is very clear it is very easy please write it down and then we'll move forward okay now now we will be discussing the stoichiometric defects first okay in before discussing the stoichiometric defect let's discuss about the defect let's discuss about the non ionic solid defects okay they are majorly classified as vacancy defect and and uh, this is your vacancy defect and that is your interstitial defect now let's try to understand it okay so now my dear students if we talk about the vacancy defect what actually happens is let's say you have a you have a solid like this okay so since it is a non ionic solid there we will not discuss about the charges right yes it is a non ionic solid so let's say you have a here 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 and a here okay so now what happens is in this particular in this particular um Uh, solid what happens is you heat the solid and obviously it will have some defect here so when you heat the solid what happens is let's say your one of the one of the a goes away one of your a goes away okay yes since it is a non ionic solid we will not see any ratio or anything what will we say now here ma'am since a is gone there is a vacancy present so since here only a vacancy is present we call it a vacancy defect we call it a vacancy defect okay this is something written in your ncert that is the reason i am explaining you this this is of no use generally questions are not asked from this part but still it is there in your ncert so i am just explaining you in non ionic solids my dear students there a on heating a solid a vacancy is created and that particular defect is known as a vacancy defect simple a vacancy is created so it is known as a vacancy defect now let's talk about the interstitial defect from interstitial defect i hope now you can imagine what would be a interstitial defect now if you talk about the interstitial defect let's say you have a a a a here now you did heat this particular solid and what happened and what happened my dear students one of your a occupied this interstitial position now a left its position 
but it came to its initial position to its interstitial position so this is the interstitial site interstitial interstitial site okay so so to this interstitial site a is written uh, a comes here and that is the reason it is known as an interstitial defect in an interstitial defect a uh, a uh, atom leaves its position and occupies a position in its interstitial site okay so this is how you define a interstitial site it is very simple very easy i don't think so there is any issue till now okay but you got an idea about from these what are we going to discuss in ionic solids okay i'll just make you understand don't worry first write it down and then we we'll move forward if you want to write it you can write a vacancy is created And if we talk about interstitial site, atom occupies the interstitial site. Okay, yes. Now write it down. I hope you've written it. Now let's move forward. Now, my dear students, now is the main part coming from where generally questions are asked. If you talk about your stoichiometric defects, that is now, my dear students, we are talking about the ionic solids. Okay, so now we are talking about the ionic solids, and in ionic solids, you have cations and anions. Okay, so you can classify the stoichiometric defect defects as Schottky defect. Okay, or you can classify it as Frankel defect. These are the two types of defects that arises. Okay, I hope you are clear with this Schottky defect or the Frankel defect. Now, let's try to understand what Schottky defect and Frankel defect do. Okay, so now my dear students, I will make you understand here and then I will uh, make you write points together as well. So, let's say you have a, you have a solid like this. Since it is an ionic solid, since it is a ionic solid, definitely you will have, since it is a ionic solid, definitely you will have A plus, B minus, A plus, B minus, okay. So, here it will come B minus, A plus, B minus, A plus, okay, yes. So, now what happens in Schottky defect is that, Let's say, let's say your one of the cation, since you know that cations are smaller in size and your anions are larger in size. Because in cations, one electron is left, whereas in cations, whereas in uh, anions, one more electron has came in and the size has become even bigger. So, cation size is generally less. So, one of the cation just leaves the site. One of the cation just leaves the site. Okay. So, now when your cation will leave the site, my dear student, what will happen just a second huh? so now what happened oh, okay i am sorry we did discuss this where is it yeah it is here yeah, it's fine i don't know what happened everything written is gone okay What's happening? Okay. I'll I'll draw it again. I don't know what happened here. So you have atoms like this. Okay. So now since it is an ionic solid, you will have A plus B minus. You will have A plus B minus. You will have B minus A plus and you will have B minus A plus. Okay. So now what happens in short key defect is that my dear students. What happens in short key defect is that one of your cation leaves it. So now you will heat the solid. One of the cation since it is smaller in size it is easy for it to leave. So what happens your uh, your what is happening? What is happening here? 
आई डोंट नो वॉट्स द इशू फाइन I'll make you understand on the next slide. Huh? Okay. So now let's talk about the short key defect. And once and for all, I am drawing it again. Okay. I am sorry, my dear students. So you have you have short key defect. Now what happens in short key defect? You have atoms like these. Sorry, positions like these, and your ions occupy these positions. A plus B negative, A plus B negative, uh, B negative, A plus B negative, A plus. Okay. So now what happens is you'll heat the solid, and obviously some defect will take place. And what happens is one of your cation leaves the position because cations are smaller in size, so it is easy for them to leave. So this is how a vacancy is created. Okay. Now this is a this is a defect, and that is known as short key defect. Okay. And how can you remember this? Since the word is short key, can you remember this word with short? it is short of some at ions it is short of some ions that is it has lesser number of ions okay which defect does has lesser number of ions short key because ions leave their positions now if you see the total positive charge here you will say 1 2 3 ma'am total three positive charges present can i ask you how much of the negative charges present you will say 1 2 and 3 Four, ma'am. Four negative charges present here. Now, my dear students, I told you that be it anything, every and every time your electrical neutrality will be maintained, right? Yes. Now, for the electrical neutrality to maintain, you need three negative charge and not four negative charge. So, what happens is when one A plus leaves, one of the B negative also leaves because it has to maintain the electrical neutrality. And now, if you see, you will say that you have three negative charge and you have three positive charge. So, there is electrical neutrality, electro neutrality. This is something just to explain you okay this is something just to explain you it's not only three positive and three negative charge just an example to make you explain okay so now my dear students what happens in short key defect is equal number of cations and anions leave their sides equal number of cations and anions leave their side and now if you will see the ratio of cations to anions what will you see you have 1 2 3 3 cations and you have 3 anions so the ratio is 1 ratio 1 and if you talk about initial if it was here a plus and b minus still you had 4 cations and 4 anions still the ratio was 1 ratio 1 and that is the reason it is known as a stoichiometric defect because the ratio of the cation to anion before the defect and after the defect is exactly same okay yes so this is what actually happens in a short key defect i hope you are clear with the short key defect okay now let's try to understand what is a frankel defect okay so what happens in a frankel defect my dear students you have atoms like these positions which are occupied by cations and anions so now your cations and anions will occupy position let's say a plus b minus a plus b minus you have a uh, b minus a plus and b minus a plus so now what happens is what happens is in frankel defect my dear students one of your cation one of your cation leaves its side leaves its site now what is this cation does is this cation occupies some interstitial position in the solid some interstitial position in the solid so it left its position and it occupied some interstitial position okay so now if i if i ask you initial cation to anion ratio can you tell me 1 2 3 4 you will say ma'am 4 ratio 4 yes so it was 1 ratio 1 right initially now after after the defect has arisen after my dear students what will happen you will say still ma'am it is present in the solid so still the ratio is 1 ratio 1 so since the uh, cation to anion ratio isn't changing it is a stoichiometric defect now let's see whether the total electro neutrality is maintained or not you have four positive charge and you have four negative charge so yes electrical neutrality is also 
maintained electrical neutrality is also maintained right yes so this is the major difference between your short key defect and frankel defect in short key defect equal number of cations and anions leave their sites whereas in frankel defect a cation leaves its side and occupies some interstitial position or you better say a, a, a ion any ion it could be cation or an ion majorly it is cation but any ion leaving its interstitial site uh, sorry its site and occupying the interstitial position is known as a frankel defect okay yes so first draw these diagrams because we'll be using these diagrams a lot and then we'll move forward okay perfect i hope you've written it now see they have drawn diagrams for you as well i have drawn it on my own so let's just leave it and let's try to understand each and every difference because question is generally asked on frankel and uh, short keys differences points okay so we need to understand each and every point very seriously the first point says that in this defect equal number in this defect equal number of cations and anions are found to be present are found to be permanently missing they are permanently missing but your number of cations and anions are exactly equal and that is the reason electro neutrality is still maintained and the cation to anion ratio is also same and that is the reason we call it short key sorry stoichiometric defect okay short I'll write short so that you will understand uh, always and always that short key defect is short of atoms. Okay, let's talk about the Frankel defect. Uh, in this defect, the ions are dislocated. They are dislocated from their lattice site and they are found to be present in the interstitial positions and they are found to be present in some interstitial position and they are found to be present in some interstitial site. Okay. Perfect. I hope you are clear with this. Very good, my dear students. You can write it down and then we'll move forward. Let's discuss another point. If I hope you've written it. Now, since my dear students, in, in uh, short key defect, you know that equal number of cations and anions are leaving and the mass is due to the cations and anions only. Right? Yes. So, if I talk about, if I talk about If, if I talk about density, it is mass by volume. Okay. So volume is for the lattice point, right? Yes, for the lattice, cubic lattice. So, volume will not change. It will remain constant. Okay, ma'am. Volume will not change. It is constant. But if we talk about the mass, mass is because of the ions present. Mass is because of the ions present, my dear students. Now, what is happening? Your two of the ions are missing. This means that, ma'am, mass is decreasing. And since mass is decreasing, your density will definitely decrease so this is the defect where density actually decreases so what will we say density decreases due to the short key defect now let's talk about the frankel defect if we talk about the frankel defect in frankel defect we had we had ions present like this let's say you had uh, a plus here b minus here a plus here b minus here uh, b minus here a plus b minus and a plus now one of it just left and it occupied some interstitial position let's say a let's say a plus okay now can i talk about the density here yes please let's talk about the density density is equal to mass upon volume now volume is constant that is understood because the cubic crystal system will remain the same okay now let's talk about the mass mass is because of the ions has there any been change any has there been any change in the number of ions no it just changed its position but the number of ions are still the same and since they are same your mass will also be a constant value and eventually your density of the crystal system will also be constant so can i say that density remains same yes in frankel defect my dear students density remains same because no ion is leaving the lattice sites okay perfect i hope you are clear with this please write it down and then we'll move forward 
Now let's talk about the other point. It is found in compounds having high ionic character and high coordination number. Okay, what does it say? It says that the Schottky defect is found. The Schottky defect is found in the compounds having high ionic character and high coordination number. Okay, now this is something very important, my dear students. When we talk about the octahedral voids, when we talk about the octahedral voids, generally uh, octahedral voids have a larger coordination number that more of the atoms are present there okay since no uh, ion is occupying the interstitial position this means that the void space is very less this means that it has a high coordination number so high coordination number atoms actually show the short key defect whereas low coordination number atoms show the frankel defect okay yes this is something very important please write it down and then we'll move forward I hope you've written it. Let's talk about the other point. Now, anionic and cationic sides. Now, my dear students, just imagine, just imagine why in Frankel defect the cation was able to occupy the position in the interstitial site. Obviously, it had a very small size and that is the reason there was a very large gap in the voids. That is the reason your small cation went to the uh, void and occupied that position. But such void size was not available in short key defect that is the reason they had to leave the site yes so <clears throat> can i say that the difference between the cation and anion size is larger here eventually there is more position available at the interstitial site as compared to your short key defect Yes, yes, my dear students, the size of cations and anions are not comparable because there will be very high extent of polarization. Their size gap is very much large. That is size of cation and anion has a large difference. Okay. And if you talk about the anionic and cationic sides here, my dear students, they are comparable. So, size of cations and anions are comparable. Okay, I hope it's clear. Perfect, my dear students. Please write it down and then we'll move forward. Now, now this was all about your stoichiometric defect that is your short key defect and Frankel defect. Okay, generally questions are asked whether that which of the following is the one where density doesn't change. Where density doesn't change, Frankel defect. Reason you know, very good. These are the few things that you need to remember. One example that you need to remember is AGCL. Okay, AGBR, sorry. AGBR is such a is such a compound which shows both of the defects. It can show Frankel defect as well as your short key defect. So this is an example which you need to remember. Okay, because question will asked will be asked from this particular part only. Okay, I hope you've written it. Now let's move forward. Next topic is my dear students, your non-stoichiometric defects. Now in non-stoichiometric defects, what actually happens is in non-stoichiometric defects, the ratio of cation to anion will definitely change. Okay, if it is changing, this means that you have a cation and you have an anion. We call it cation. We call cation as metal. Either the metal will be more or the metal will be less. These are the two cases which can happen. That is something we have written that in non-stoichiometric defect metal excess defect can be either met uh, okay we have talked about metal excess defect first and then we'll be discussing about metal uh, deficiency defect okay now how can metal excess take place ma'am either you have added more of the metal to it or ma'am the existing metal just left it position and you got the metal excess defect right yes so majorly your metal excess defect can be one due to anionic vacancies one due to anionic vacancies okay let's say you had some metal m x1 and then minus you had some lesser amount of the ions maybe some ions just left and you got more of the metal okay yes 
or it could be incorporation of metal or it could be incorporation of metal. That is you had some metal, it you added some and then you had your anion. So, how can a metal be in excess? A metal can be in excess in two parts. Either you have added more of the metal to it, then you had a metal excess defect or some of the anions just left the site and that is the reason you had some anionic deficiencies and you had more of the metal and you said that it is a metal excess defect. So, metal excess defect can happen because of two cases. Either you add more metal, you remove the anions present. Okay, yes, now we will be discussing both of the cases together so now when we talk about the cases please write it down and then we'll move forward let's talk about the anionic deficiencies first okay anionic deficiency now if anionic deficiency is there this means that you had some mx uh, ionic metal and you had this one and some x amount of it is gone okay so now let's try to understand how anionic deficiency takes place okay let's say you have a metal let's say you have a metal let's say you have a solid in fact and the solid is NaCl so you have Na you have Cl you have Na plus you have Cl minus you have Cl minus Na plus and you have Cl minus and you have Na plus. So now my dear students, what actually happens is you have a metal crystal, uh, you have a crystal system like this. Okay. Now you pass, you pass some Na vapors through it. Okay. Now you pass some sodium vapors through it. This solid, you pass some sodium vapors okay now when will when you will pass some sodium vapors what will happen my dear students your sodium wants wants your sodium will lose a electron it will give you na plus and one electron why because sodium has a tendency to lose electron sodium has a tendency to lose electron it only wants to lose electron and gain the stable noble gas configuration okay so when you uh, when you pass sodium vapors through this solid sodium tends to lose an electron and convert it into na plus now now my dear students what happens is this Na plus this Na plus is wants a friend which is Cl minus because they both are best friends right yes so when it passes through it it sees that it sees that it has some Cl minus here so it says uh, to the Cl minus that let's just go away from here okay so this Cl minus says okay fine you're my best friend obviously I want to go with you so they just go together Na plus and Cl minus and you get NaCl, right? Yes. And since your Cl minus has left, you get a vacancy here. You get a vacancy here. So now if I see the total number of cations and anions ratio has been changed. You have four of the cations, but you only have three of the anions. Also, you have four plus charge and you have only three minus charge. Okay. So now the problem has arised because we need electrical neutrality. We really want electrical neutrality. Without it, we cannot do anything. What will happen now? Now, my dear students, comes the entry of the superhero. What does the superhero do? Here is your superhero electron negative, right? Yes. What does this electron do? It just goes here and occupies this position. Now, electron wanted, electron was the savior because this whole solid just wanted a negative charge to maintain its electron neutrality. Now, if you see, you have total of four positive charge and total of four negative charge. So, the electrical neutrality is maintained. But if I ask you the ratio of the cation to anion, initially it was four ratio four, that is one ratio one. But now, you have four of the cations but only three of the anions Cl minus. So, the ratio is changed and that is the reason it is known as a non stoichiometric defect. Now, it is a non stoichiometric defect. The electron has saved the day my dear students and that is the reason this particular part is known as F center. It is known as F center. Now, let us try to understand what does this F center mean. 
what does this f center mean what is the role of this f center it has a very 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 important role see now my dear students your f center your f center is the very very important part generally questions are asked from this particular part you know that you have a single electron present that is you have a unpaired electron present here so now we'll be understanding and talking about the f center part actually this f center parts uh, part actually imparts color to the solid you see solids different colors that is because of this f center present i'll make you understand how before that write it down all the part that i have made you understand and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it now see F center, the unpaired electron occupying the lattice site of the anion or the anionic vacancy is known as the F center. So, what is the F center which occupies the anionic vacancy which saves the day? Okay, next, the unpaired electron in the anionic vacancy F center gives rise to paramagnetism. I hope all of you have studied what is paramagnetism. When is paramagnetism, uh, when does paramagnetism arise? It arises it arises when there are unpaired electrons present and in F centers there is an unpaired electron so paramagnetism arises. Perfect. Yes, please write it down and then we'll move forward. I hope you've written it. Now, the F center is responsible for the color of the crystal. The F center is actually responsible for the color of system but how is it? Uh, possible now try to understand it let's say you have an electron present here see now my dear students you know the electrons are very stable okay they uh, are present in their most stable state now what happens is these electrons get excited to the higher energy level they go to the higher energy level they enjoy whenever you talk about your friends you are very you feel very energetic when you uh, when your mother says you that we are going to your friend's house or anything you will go to their house, you will play, you will enjoy, but eventually you want to come back to your house at the end of the day. Same day, same way, my dear students, electron gets excited and it goes to the higher excited state and then it wants to come back to its original house. Now, there is an energy difference here. Here, he was in very high energy, but here it is in its most stable position. So, in order to come here, it needs to emit the extra energy and it emits the extra energy in the form of light and this light actually gives you the color to the solid and this light gives the color to the solid okay yes so the f center is responsible for the color of the crystal on excitation now your electron got excited the electron goes to the higher energy level it go, went to the higher energy state when it comes back it gives rise to the emission spectra and this is your emission spectra because of which we see the color because of which we see the color and that is the reason your NaCl solid seems to be yellow in color your NaCl is seems to be yellow in color okay perfect please write it down and then we'll move forward Now, when potential difference is applied, now you have an unpaired electron. Whenever you will apply a potential difference, the F center can move in the same direction, giving rise to little electrical conductivity. Hence, negative charge is moving. It is called an N-type semiconductor. Okay, I'll make you understand the semiconductor part in the... Uh, the, those electrical properties when I'll make you understand the electrical properties but you can understand that since it is a, a single electron, it is a free electron. So, it helps in movement of charge and that is the reason it is known as a n-type semiconductor okay please write it down and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it now let's move forward okay yes so all this was all about how the deficiency of anion how the deficiency of anion can cause a defect and it can eventually increase the metals amount okay so we can see it as a metal excess defect because of the anionic deficiency I hope it's clear till now. Now, the next type of metal excess defect could be your incorporation of metal. You might add extra metal to a solid. How can this happen? Okay. So, let's see. Let's say we have, we have a solid. Let's say we have a solid here. Like this. Okay. Now, I have, I have, let's say, a... Uh, I am talking about ZnO. 
ओके आई हैव अ सॉलिड ऑफ जेड एन ओ सो आई हैव जिंक टू प्लस हियर आई हैव ओ टू माइनस हियर आई हैव जेड एन टू प्लस हियर आई हैव ओ टू माइनस हियर जेड एन टू प्लस ओ टू माइनस जेड एन सॉरी 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 राइट यस सो यू हैव ओ टू माइनस ईयर यू हैव जेड एन टू प्लस ईयर यू हैव ओ टू माइनस ईयर एंड यू हैव जेड एन टू प्लस ईयर इफ आई टॉक अबाउट जेड एन ओ आई नो दैट आई हैव जेड एन टू प्लस I have two electrons present here, right? Yes. So now, my dear students, what happens is sometimes in a solid, in a solid, you get. Let's say you have this zinc oxide present here. What does this do? It just goes into this side, and Zn occupies this interstitial position. So your Zn two plus has occupied the interstitial position, and the left two electrons go and occupy the other interstitial position. So in a particular ionic solid, your Ion as well as the corresponding number of anion uh, electrons go and occupy the interstitial position. Now, if you see, my dear students, initially you had zinc two plus ions total. How many? One, two, three, four, and you had O two minus four. So the ratio was one ratio one, and the stoichiometric ratio was also maintained, and electrical neutrality was also maintained. Now, if you incorporate a metal, which is let's say we have incorporated zinc two plus. Now, if I talk about Zn two plus and O two minus, now you have five Zn. Two uh, plus and you have four O two minus, so the ratio has changed. And since the ratio has changed, can I say that the it is a non-stoichiometric defect and is it electrically neutral? Yes, the total of positive charge is one, two, three, four, five, five, ten. positive and you have 10 in negative charge so yes ma'am electrical neutrality is still maintained right yes so the electrical neutrality part is good to go and the ratio has changed so it is a non stoichiometric defect okay so it is written that a metal enters at the interstitial site as a cation and the free electrons are, uh, are left another interstitial site it is neutral it is a neutral type of semi conductor it is a neutral type of semi conductor okay because it has free electron because it has free electron so it can conduct electricity and that is the reason we are calling it a semi conductor and since it has free electrons so it is known as a n type of semi conductor as well okay yes i hope you are clear with this you can write it down and then we'll move forward i hope you have written this my dear students now let's move forward now this is the only one defect my dear students if i talk about the density here can i say that it is mass upon volume and the volume remains constant right yes now let's talk about the mass mass see you have masses of the ions some of the mass of the ions initially you had the mass of 4 zn2 plus and 4 o2 minus but now you have the mass of 5 zn2 plus and 4 o2 minus so can i say that mass has increased and since mass has increased the density has increased and this is the only one defect where the density actually increases this is the only one defect where actually density increases and generally the question is asked that which is that defect where density actually increases it is your it is your incorporation of metal so it is very important because question will definitely be asked from this particular part okay let's see metal excess defect of this type leads to an increase in density only defect where density increases so this is something very important please write it down and then we'll move forward now let's talk about the other defect the which is metal deficiency defect now what if metal is deficient and how can this happen how can metal be deficient now let's try to understand that see my dear students let's say let's say i have a solid like this i have a solid like this and and it is fe2 fe2 plus then i have o2 minus then i have fe2 plus then i have o2 minus i have o2 minus fe2 plus then o2 minus and then fe2 
plus okay so now so now my dear students i know that fe has a tendency to show two different oxidation states it can be present in fe2 plus or it can be present in fe3 plus so it has a tendency to show variable oxidation states okay so now what happens is let's try and understand what if what if my dear students i i change i change this fe2 plus with fe3 plus right yes and 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 also also uh, now uh, i change this fe2 plus with also fe3 plus right yes so now i have 3 plus 3 6 7 8 9 10 10 of the total positive charge no 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 there is something wrong with it I have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 positive charge. I have O2 minus here. I have O2 minus here. I have O2 minus here. 8 to negative charge. Okay. So now I'll have to increase it to make you understand. So let me just increase the atoms. Okay. So now, so now, I have 8 negative. So I need O2 minus here as well. I need... Uh, O2 minus here as well. Then I I'll not have Fe2 plus here. Then I'll have Fe. Then I'll have O2 minus here and Fe2 plus here. I hope now the total charge is balanced. This is balanced. This is 3 plus charge. This is 10 and this is also 10. Yes. Okay. So now see what happened is now if you see now if you see my dear students initially when you only had Fe2 plus when you only had Fe2 plus you could say that the ratio was exactly equal the number of Fe2 plus were exactly equal to Fe2 minus right yes but since Fe can also show you Fe3 plus oxidation state some of its ions starts showing Fe3 plus oxidation state. Now, in order to maintain the electron neutrality, obviously one of the O2 minus has to leave. And now, my dear students, the ratio of the cation to anion has changed. But the electron neutrality is still maintained because that is the most important thing. Right? Yes. And that is the reason it is known as a metal deficiency defect. So, which metals do show the metal deficiency defect? My metal deficiency defect is only and only shown by the metals which have a tendency to show variable oxidation states, which have the tendency to show variable oxidation states. Okay, so this defect can exist where the metal has the tendency to show variable valency. The positive charge lost by the missing of the cation is compensated by the higher valency cation which are present in the metal. And that is the reason we say that metal is... Uh, metal is comparatively less as compared to the anion right yes perfect so this is how this is how we show the metal deficiency defect okay i hope you're clear with this please write it down and then we'll move forward Now we will try to understand that how can we find that how much of the vacancy will take place. Okay. So now my dear students, how will you imagine that? Now let's say you have a metal. Let's say you have, let's say you have 3 Fe2 plus. Here also Fe2 plus and here also Fe2 plus. Okay. So now, so now my dear students, if I again write these. And now I want to relate them. Let's say I had Fe3 plus, I had Fe3 plus. So can I say that these three are equivalent? I have three Fe2 plus ions. And if I replace the Fe2 plus with Fe3 plus, I can say that it is equal to two Fe3 plus plus one vacancy. So, so, so my dear students, each Fe3 plus ion creates a vacancy. Each Fe3 plus ion will create a vacancy. Right? Yes. So, 3 Fe2 plus is equivalent to 2 Fe3 plus plus 1 vacancy. Okay? Yes. So, this is how we relate the number of vacancies. I hope you are clear with this. Perfect, my dear students. Please write it down. Written. Perfect. Now just see. 
Number of cationic vacancies present in one mole of doped lattice is equal to the, you have to relate both of the valencies, you will have to relate both of the vacancies and find out how many uh, vacancy does a particular ion create. Okay, perfect. Please write it down. Now, let's try to solve a few questions, okay? Now, the questions are, okay, we, uh, okay we'll, we'll solve questions in the next class. So, just wait a second, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll solve the questions in the next class, my dear students. Till now, let's keep it here. We'll uh, solve a few questions in the next class. So, now what is your homework for today is that you'll have to read the NCRT of all these defects because only and only questions will be asked from these defects. Uh, I have uh, not discussed any of the questions today. So, I'll discuss the questions in the next class. Starting first, we'll discuss the questions and then we'll uh, cover our magnetic properties and electrical properties okay yes i hope you're clear with this uh, please do read the ncrt uh, read the ncrt of the electrical and magnetic part as well so that you will have a better understanding when i'll make you explain everything uh, till then my dear students keep studying we'll meet in the next session uh, thank you so much bye bye take care